That's it. Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Danielle Larigi, and I am a senior developer advocate here at Salesforce. And uh, I focus mostly on empowering developers on the data cloud platform. Um, I live in Dallas, Texas, and you can follow me here on Twitter. Uh, you can also follow me on LinkedIn, which is where I post uh, all my newest content, like uh, any videos I'm working on, um, any blog posts I'm working on writing, and also uh, any city that I'm speaking in. So because I am a Salesforce employee, of course, I have to do this forward-looking statement, which just says basically to make all of your purchasing decisions based off of what is available in the system today and not based off of what I say might be coming uh, out in the future uh, to the data cloud platform or any of our associated products. Okay, so here we are. I'm gonna jump right in on how data cloud works. So uh, data cloud is a customer data platform. Um, it has evolved from many other versions like uh, CDP, Customer 360 Audiences, and formerly Genie, to now become Data Cloud. Data Cloud is designed to allow you to connect uh, multiple source systems and ingest data about a customer from multiple source systems. So, for example, you might be storing data in Salesforce CRM. You're probably storing some data in Marketing Cloud, since it's a Marketing Cloud user group, uh, Commerce Cloud. Uh, you might even have some files stored in Amazon S3 or Google Cloud Storage or even Azure. And Data Cloud has out-of-the-box connectors to a lot of these systems like CRM, like Marketing Cloud, like Commerce Cloud, uh, to allow you to ingest data into Data Cloud so that you can build a single source of truth of the customer. So previously, we had one way where you could get uh, data into Data Cloud, which was our traditional use one of our out-of-the-box connectors or ingestion API and pull in all of that data into our data lake objects and then map it to our big data model objects. But as of recently, uh, the product managers have been working on a new way to pull in data into data cloud called bring your own lake. You might've heard about this a few times and under that umbrella, uh, we currently are working on the ability to be able to pull in data from Google BigQuery, um, which is a huge data warehouse of Google and also um, Snowflake as well. So right now you can do a data share from Data Cloud to Snowflake and they're working on the ability to release GA, the ability to, to uh, share Snowflake data into Data Cloud. We also have a variety of SDKs. So we have a mobile SDK for both iOS and Android to allow you to capture data such as page views, clicks from mobile apps that you've custom developed and send that data into Data Cloud. We also have our web SDK, which allows you to send uh, information from your custom developed websites into Data Cloud as well. And we also have our MuleSoft AnyPoint connector, which allows you to bring in data from MuleSoft um, using any of MuleSoft's connectors uh, via either AnyPoint or Code Builder. So all of that data, you can imagine all that data is coming in via either streaming and streaming data can come in at near real time or batch. Batch is processed as soon as hourly. Um, I think they are working on trying to bump this up to even as soon as five minutes. Um, so all this data is coming into Data Cloud's data lake and that all gets harmonized into a canonical data model of data lake objects and data model objects. And all of this happens and you're able to build identity resolution jobs to match all of these different profiles into unified profiles for you know, a, a customer that's stored in Salesforce CRM or a subscriber that's, served, that's uh, in Marketing Cloud or you know, a purchaser in Commerce Cloud. Basically, you want to try and capture all of the touch points for a single customer across all of these different systems into one single source of truth. And that's what Data Cloud um, is, is helping you to solve. Now you can imagine, you don't just wanna pull all this data into Data Cloud, right? You want to actually be able to do something with this data. So we have the ability to do what we call activations on the data in the form of calculated insights, which are you know aggregations and, and transformations on the data. 
uh, using uh, data transforms, batch transforms. You have the ability to segment the data um, into audiences so that you can use the, the audiences in Google ads and meta ads and Amazon ads so that then you can start using them for targeting for marketing purposes. Uh, you also have the ability to enter everyone into marketing cloud journeys as well so that you could start sending out emails and, and text messages. And then we also have a few connectors under Tableau which allows you to do some type, some reporting on the data lake. Uh, we have out of, the, out of the box reports and dashboards now, as of recently, where you can build uh, reports and dashboards on the data lake. But we also have the ability to use AI. So we've been working on creating our vector database so that you can start using the data stored in data cloud into prompts. Um, and we've also worked on our no code, low code model builder to be able to build uh, regression models um, and even bring your own large language models as well as uh, the ability to integrate uh, models from outside the system that are built in either Vertex AI, Amazon SageMaker or uh, Databricks as well. So we're gonna be diving into all of these things within detail. So what will first happen is you will first need to make a connection between data cloud and the source system. Now we're gonna follow the traditional ETL method uh, using the out of the box connectors in data cloud. So the first thing you need to do is first create the connection to the source system. So either marketing cloud, commerce cloud, Salesforce CRM, you need to make the connection to that source system. After you make the connection to that source system, then that's then that system's objects will then be available under data streams. And data streams are how you get data into data cloud. So there's multiple streams that you can create. Remember the S3, the Google Cloud Storage, the Salesforce CRM, and the Marketing Cloud um, data streams. There's all of these different streams, and all of these are going to flow in data into your data lake into data cloud. Now, the first thing that all that data is going to hit is your data lake object, or DLO for short. And the data lake object is basically just the initial container that's going to hold uh, the data from your source system. So if it's a marketing cloud subscriber, um, you'll first create a connection to marketing cloud, right? And then you would create a data stream to marketing cloud to then look at a data extension. And then that data extension will flow in via the data stream to initially a data lake object. So just an initial container, and it would just be dumped into this object as is, okay? From there, what you need to do is you need to map your data lake object to what's called a data model object. And a data model object is basically a data cloud's canonical data model and its metadata structure. So in Salesforce, you have standard and custom objects. You have the account, the contact, opportunity, lead, and then you have whatever custom objects you created on your own in Salesforce. In Marketing Cloud, you know, you have data extensions. That's, it's, that's Marketing Cloud's canonical data model. And you also have the lists as well, like the all subscribers list. Well, in Data Cloud, you have what's called data model objects. So think of data model object to data cloud as data extensions to, to Marketing Cloud or, or standard and custom objects to Salesforce CRM. So DMOs are what data cloud understands. It's what it knows, it's what it understands as its data structure. So you need to map those initial containers to something that data cloud can understand basically. Now, just touching back on the MuleSoft and, and data cloud integration. So remember, we have the ability to integrate uh, MuleSoft with data cloud um, using any of the connectors that's available in any point. Um, currently, there's not support for Composer. Um, maybe there'll be support for Composer down the line, but right now there is just the ability to, to use uh, any point. There's several out of the box connectors that are already available within MuleSoft for data cloud. So if you scan this, um, there's uh, several tutorials uh, at this QR code that will teach you how to work with data cloud APIs to be able to ingest data, query data, delete data, uh, um, and work with data between MuleSoft and data cloud. Okay, now remember we've previously up until this point always talked about using one of the connectors um, to get data into data cloud using the traditional create a connection, create a data stream, have that data flow in via the data stream to a data lake object and then map over to a data model object. But as of recently, there's this new functionality that's coming out um, called bring your own lake that we covered briefly on the how data cloud works slide. 
So with Bring Your Own Lake, you have the ability now to create what's called a data share and a data share target. So a data share target is a source system that you want to share your data cloud data to. And then a data share is where you are actually choosing the objects or the data model objects and data lake objects within data cloud to do the share. So here's a little bit of how it works. So again, you would create that data, you would uh, connect Snowflake and data cloud via the data share target. And then from there, you would select the data lake objects and the data model objects that you want to share into Snowflake. And all of this is done um, via the creation of some external tables um, or virtual tables within Snowflake. And all of your data in Data Cloud will show up as data into Snowflake that you can then query and, and work with within Snowflake. Now, coming out later on this month, hopefully, is the ability to bring your Snowflake data back into Data Cloud. So again, not having to do the traditional um, load of data or the copying of data into Data Cloud Data Lake, but instead just being able to share the Snowflake table to Data Cloud as something new that will be called uh, external Data Lake objects. And currently in Pilot, which we are hoping will come out later this month, is the ability to do the same thing with Google BigQuery. So if you're not familiar with BigQuery, it's something really, really popular that a lot of users are using. It's basically a data warehouse or data, data a huge data warehouse that's uh, similar to Snowflake. Um, and it allows you to share data that's stored in Google to Data Cloud via the uh, bring your own lake functionality. So again, zero ETL, you won't have to copy anything over. Uh, you'll just be able to create uh, a data share target and make it a uh, big Google BigQuery. You'll just create the connection between the two systems and then you'll just share your data like objects and your data model objects via data share over to Google, Big, Google BigQuery. And the other way you will uh, just share the data from the Google BigQuery tables back to Data Cloud. And those will be uh, exposed in Salesforce Data Cloud as external data lake objects that you can then map over to data model objects. Okay, so you can imagine that you're getting all of this data in from all of these source systems, right? Um, Salesforce CRM, Marketing Cloud, um, Commerce Cloud, maybe even you're bringing in some data via MuleSoft, via Workday or SAP. So all of this data is coming in to Data Cloud. And you can imagine that some of this data has been you know, out of date. Maybe someone has moved and their address hasn't been updated, updated in a particular you know, system. Maybe their phone numbers changed or maybe someone has just keyed things in wrong. Well, you have the ability in Data Cloud to run identity resolution jobs to enable you to map uh, source profiles uh, sorry, to enable you to create unified profiles uh, based off of matching criteria and and um, based on matching criteria and resolution criteria that you decide. So let's say here I have Alicia, and let's say Alicia's you know email address is is different, but her first name and her telephone are the same. Well, most likely Alicia is the same person, right? Across all of these systems. So I can write a rule that says, if Alicia's first name, last name, and her telephone is the same, and maybe just her email address is different, then treat her as the same person and create a unified record for Alicia. Um, you can do any variation of these rules. You can also prioritize these rules in terms of which rule you want to come first. You can also select which, uh, which record is the winning record. So find where Alicia's you know, email address is the most time and choose that as the email address for her quote unquote unified profile or find where her address is most frequently and make that her address for her unified profile file. But the idea here is that we don't want to inflate our metrics in terms of segmentations or in terms of audiences that we're trying to build, right? You don't want to accidentally send the same email to the same person 11 times just because they're being treated as uh, individual records because you know the data is bad or the data hasn't been cleaned up. Um, you also don't want to, you know, 
enter somebody into a journey multiple times just because you know the data is not all the way clean because then it's going to over inflate your metrics. So with identity resolution, you're trying to basically unify your data and make it as clean as you can within data cloud so that you're able to get the most accurate accurate counts for your segmentation and so that you're also not annoying people with sending them the same email or the same text message multiple times just because you have them as multiple records in the system. So this is something really, really powerful. A lot of questions I get um, is typically like, well, will this cleanse my source data? It will not cleanse your source data, but what it will do is it will uh, help to uh, reduce the amount of duplicates in data clouds, data lake. And as of recently, we also have the ability to use data cloud enrichments. So with data cloud enrichments, you now have the ability to write back data from data cloud to contact and leads records. So you can create custom fields on the contact and lead record and map them to, uh, to fields within data cloud to re-update uh, fields on the, on the uh, contact and lead, which is really powerful because uh, you can imagine all this data is coming in from multiple sources, getting harmonized into the data lake of data cloud. And then you now have the ability to write it back to your contacts and leads, which then you could put those, uh, put that data back into marketing cloud um, about your contact and lead. Uh, they are going to expand this beyond the contact and lead from what I'm told from the product managers. I just spoke to them at TDX and they said that they are going to make this available for all objects in Salesforce, which will make this even more powerful. And you also have the ability to make a data model object within uh, in a data cloud, a related list on a contact or, or lead record as well. So you'll be able to see uh, data cloud data um, while on your contact and lead record within Salesforce. And you'll also be able to uh, see fields that are updated from data cloud data on your contact and lead record. So. This is really, really something powerful that I'm really, really excited about, especially for when it expands to all objects within Salesforce. So one of the things that we recently announced um, was the ability to be able to build your own AI models using the no code, low code way within data cloud. So we had a legacy uh, version of Einstein Studio which um, is going to be retired, I assume, pretty soon. And they came up with a new version of Einstein Studio, which actually allows you to build your own uh, regression models and, and train your own regression models based off of your data that's stored in data cloud. So all of your data that's getting ingested into data cloud, data, data lake objects and data model objects is now available to be used as a training data set in a regression model so that you can start making, uh, doing predictive, uh, uh, predictive predictions with your data cloud data um, with predictive AI. Um, we also have the ability once again to pull in data from, to pull in uh, models from uh, some of our partners, uh, Amazon, SageMaker, they have a very powerful AI platform, which has a variety of regression models, large language models, uh, something that really powerful that data scientists use. Uh, Google Vertex AI has a competing product that does the same and so does Databricks. And you have the ability to, to pull all of your data from data cloud into all of these products, uh, make predictions, use your data as training data for your regression models or for your AI models to then be able to do predictive analytics and output those predictions back into data cloud as well. And also as of February 24th, we have the ability to now bring your own large language model as well. So um, if you're familiar with ChatGPT or you use ChatGPT, then you'll, uh, you might know what a large language model is. So ChatGPT is a large language model. Um, it's made by OpenAI and OpenAI is one of our partners um, as well as Azure OpenAI. And uh, as of now, you have the ability to, to bring a large language model from OpenAI or Azure OpenAI into uh, data cloud so that you can then uh, use them in prompts and prompt builder, which is one of the new functionalities that we just released um, and announced at TDX. So lots of AI capabilities available with your data cloud data. All right, so now let's look at our demo. Okay, so here we are. 
and uh, data cloud if you haven't seen it um, before. This is what it looks like. And you might be thinking to yourself, this looks a lot like Salesforce. And that is because data cloud is hosted out of a Salesforce org. So you will always have a Salesforce hub org that will house your data cloud. And you will access data cloud like you access any other app within uh, your Salesforce org. Now, one of the questions that I get a lot is, is my Salesforce, um, is my Salesforce data uh, available natively already with into my data cloud? And the answer is no, you still have to create a connection between data cloud and Salesforce in order to ingest uh, data from your hub org. So you'll see here, I have my sales app, probably have a service app in here. And then again, you access your data cloud app from the app launcher, just like you would launch any other app within Salesforce. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go back here into data cloud setup. So you can see what the setup looks like for data cloud. And so here is my data cloud setup. And you can see the data cloud is located on AWS. And we have a variety of different connectors here in the back. So you can see um, I already have marketing cloud hooked up in here which allows me to ingest data from marketing cloud in the form of data extensions. And then also I have Salesforce CRM back here, which allows me to ingest data via Salesforce CRM. And then I also have the ingestion API back here, which allows me to ingest data via the ingestion API. So we're gonna spend a minute here on the ingestion API. So, if there's not a connector out of the box, right? So if we don't have a connector for Salesforce, for Commerce Cloud or Marketing Cloud or you know, AWS S3, if we don't have a connector out of the box, what you have the ability to do is to use the ingestion API in order to connect um, any other system. And Marketing Cloud, I'm sorry, and MuleSoft also uses the ingestion API to get data into, into uh, data cloud as well. And the ingestion API is the ingestion API allows you to pull in data via batch, as well as streaming data that's near real time. It allows you to basically create a connection to a source system that we don't already have a connector for out of the box, okay? So we're gonna come back to that and let's go back to Salesforce CRM for a second. What I'm gonna do is click new and then I'm going to click connect another org and I'm going to do login with a different username. And I'm actually going to go phishing for my recent credentials. I'm just going to pause the share for one second. I'm just gonna pause the share for one second while I go phishing for these credentials. <laughs> Okay, now I'm going to resume my share. Okay, so I am going to copy, I'm gonna show you how easy it is to make a connection between your Salesforce CRM org as well as your data cloud org. So I'm gonna go back here to my login page and I'm going to enter in my username and then I'm going to enter in my password. click login. Now, what it's going to ask me is, do I want to allow access? And I'm going to allow the access. And just as easy as that, I have now connected a new data cloud org. I mean, sorry, a new Salesforce org to my data cloud that my data cloud can now ingest data from and access the objects of my Salesforce org so that I don't get confused. I'm going to rename this org. Marketing Cloud Group Demo, so don't forget, or so I can easily identify this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go back using my app launcher to Data Cloud. And then 
I'm going to go to data streams. And over here, I'm going to click new. And then I'm gonna choose my Salesforce CRM. So these are all the connectors under data streams. And I'm gonna click next. And then you can see here, I have the marketing cloud uh, org or the Salesforce CRM. I sh shouldn't say marketing cloud, so that could be confusing. But I have my new Salesforce CRM org that I just connected to data cloud. And I have the ability to either choose data bundles. So I can ingest three objects in my sales data bundle or 23 objects via my service data bundle, or I have the ability to view all objects in the Salesforce org. So here you'll see these are all the objects that I have in my, in my Salesforce org. So really, really easy to make the connection between data cloud and Salesforce CRM. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to search for my account object, which is a standard object in Salesforce, as you know, and I'm gonna click next. And here I have to choose what type of category this data is. So is this profile data, is it engagement data, or is it some other data? Now, if you want data that can be available in identity resolution jobs, then you need to always choose profile data for the type of data that you're bringing in. If you want the data to be um, available in certain things like streaming insights or calculated uh, streaming insights um, or anything streaming or, or behavioral data that will be available at near real time um, for some near real time metrics and you wanna choose engagement data. And if you don't have either of these data, then you're going to choose other, okay? So account is profile data. So I'm going to choose profile and click next. And then I need to associate it to a data space. Now a data space is like a business unit in marketing cloud. So similarly to how you can partition things using business units um, within marketing cloud, like folders, email templates, uh, email messages, uh, even uh, lists uh, and, and data extensions, you can also uh, partition things and, and data cloud in a similar way. So think of your data spaces as almost like a business unit and you'll be able to associate data like objects, data model objects. Uh, you'll be able to associate uh, data streams, all of those with, with data spaces, which allows uh, different businesses to work together within the same data cloud, but not necessarily uh, see their each other stuff. So I'm going to click deploy here. And what this is going to do is it's going to deploy uh, my data stream into data cloud. Now I already have um, a couple of data streams in here where I'm already ingesting data from multiple systems. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose actually this one. Okay. This one doesn't have anything mapped. So what will happen on the back end is a data lake object will get created. And how do I know that this is a data lake object? Well, I can see underscore, underscore DLL. If, you, if you're working with the data model object, it'll be underscore, underscore DLM. So similarly to Salesforce, like how Salesforce has its own naming convention where standard objects is just the name of the object and custom objects is underscore, underscore C, uh, data cloud also has its own naming convention. Now it gets a little bit more interesting because a field on a data lake object also has underscore underscore C. Don't know why they did it like that, but that's just what they did it. But a lot of people, um, I see a lot of questions of how do I know I'm looking at a data lake object versus my Salesforce CRM object that used to confuse people. Um, but uh, when you're in data cloud, you are always looking at your data lake object or data model object. You're never seeing your Salesforce CRM object when you are in data cloud. And a data lake object is structured similarly to a Salesforce object in, in terms of it has fields and field types. Now they're working on adding a few more field types to data lake objects. I believe they're working on Boolean and picklist. Right now, um, there's, ju there's just a few, um, but they're working on a few more. 
So what happens now is after this data initially comes in via your data lake object, what you want to do is then start mapping it to a data model object. Because remember, the data model object is actually the canonical data model that Data Cloud understands. So this is just the initial container over here. This is your data lake object, which is your initial container. But you need to actually map this to a data model object within Data Cloud. So you're going to click Select Objects over here. And then from there, we can see all of our out-of-the-box uh, data models that are available for us to map to. So some of them do have some of the same naming conventions as your Salesforce CRM objects. Don't let that confuse you. This is still a data model object in Data Cloud. So let's say you're pulling in some custom data, right? You're not pulling in account contact or lead data or something that even fits one of these standard data models that we have available. So uh, bundle product, or bulk message, any of these. You have the ability also to create your own custom data model object as well. So you just click create a new custom uh, model. And from there, it'll create a custom model uh, based off of the fields that you have here that you can map that custom data to. But we're going to stick with the standard one for this demo. And I'm going to choose account. And you can see here, there's already a few fields on this account data model object out of the box. You can see it's mostly limited to text, numbers, and date and time field types. So I'm going to choose this and then click Done. And it's going to auto-magically try to map for you um, based off of the field name. Now, you do have the ability, I'm going to go ahead and just save this. So let's say you have a custom object on the account. I mean, sorry, a custom field that you created on the account, right? You have the ability here to add a new field if you want to. So you can always add like a custom field. And right now, again, these are the only data types that are available. They're working on adding Boolean as well as pick lists and some other ones um, to uh, to this, but right now these are the only ones that are available. But you do have the ability to add a custom field onto a standard model object. So you have the ability to create custom data model objects off of your data, and you also have the ability to add a, add a custom fields onto a standard data model object. Okay. Now I'm not going to save this. I'm going to exit out of this so I could reuse this for another demo. But one of the things that I wanted to point out as well, so we're gonna go back to Data Cloud Setup, is the ingestion API. So here we have our ingestion API, which again is the way that we can get data in to Data Cloud if we do not have one of those out of the box connectors, right? So I'm going to click into my solar panel events uh, ingestion API connector that's already set up. So what you'll first need to do is you'll need to come here and create the connector and add the connector name. And then what you'll need to do is then upload your schema in OAS format. Okay. So I'm going to click here, view, fuel sch view full schema, just so that you can see what the schema looks like after it's been updated or uploaded. So here we have a performance summary schema with some fields and some data types here. And then we also have our panel readings, which also has our our fields and data types here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to close this. And what I've now had the ability to do is to be able to create a data stream using this ingestion API. So I'm going to go back here to data streams and click new and then click ingestion API and next. And then I will click solar panel events now I'm already ingesting um, data into these uh, in from these objects, so I'm not seeing any new ones. So basically, once you create a data stream for it, that that ability to ingest data from it will disappear. But if I had other uh, objects that were under the ingestion API or other schemas I had uploaded up there, then I would be able to see them right here, and then I would be able to insert data into the data stream for that schema. Now what I'm gonna do is close this and show you my solar panel events. So here is the data lake object that got created as a result of me creating my data stream. 
for the ingestion API. So again, it just creates a regular data lake object. Here's all those same fields and field types that you saw in my schema. So just to remind you, so cuff, date time, total power consume, reading ID, panel ID. So we're seeing all of those right here. And we've selected one already as our primary key. And so what we have the ability to do now is, and I'm just gonna go ahead and refresh Postman because it's been sitting here for a while, is we have the ability to use the ingestion API now to insert data into our solar panel events data stream. So here we have our data stream, our solar panel events, and we also have the object name, the performance summary. And here in Postman, we already have a Salesforce data cloud collection where you can go today even um, via our master collection, you can fork it into Postman and you can start working with data cloud APIs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just change the ID for this. And then I'm going to click send. And this accepted true means that I was able to successfully uh, insert a record into my data stream via uh, the ingestion API. So this is how you would insert a record via the ingestion API using uh, uh, the, the ingestion API connector that you set up because there's not already a connector out of the box available in data cloud. So that's pretty cool um, that we have that ability to do there. And then I just wanted to take you over to our new Einstein studio, which is our new low code, low code our new no-code, low-code model builder. So here um, is one of our models or one of the models that I created when I was just kind of playing around. So you can choose your data or select your data, and then you can use um, the data in data cloud. So here I'm using, um, it's not gonna let me go all the way back, but here I'm using my data cloud data as a training data set for my model here. Um, I selected my algorithm as XGBoost. And then what I was able to do was save and train a model using uh, my data cloud data, using the no-code, low-code model data builder. You have multiple versioning that you can do here. And you also have the training metrics. So here um, are some statistical methods. So the mean absolute error, you also have the root mean square error, a lot of things for people that are, you know, statisticians are really good with data science, um, but there's a lot of different analysis that you can do on the data that's stored in data cloud um, to be able to put it into regression models. There's some, uh, some fit, some validation, some nice analytics, because typically, um, what will happen is data scientists, they wanna do bias reporting, they wanna do analysis, a lot of things on their, their training data sets that they're using for their predictive AI models to make sure that their predictive AI models are good. So here's the, is this a good model? There's a couple of things over here that uh, explain to you whether the model is good or not. Here, my model, I was just making something up and using a lot of fake data. So my model accuracy is really, really low here but uh, I just wanted to point out that there is the ability to create um, these, these, these uh, AI predictive models using your data cloud data from using the new model builder, which is hosted in data cloud. Now, in addition to that, you also have the ability to bring your own AI models. So here you can see when I click new, I have the ability to create to connect a model from SageMaker. I have a ability to connect a model from Vertex AI. And I also have the ability to connect a model from Databricks. So I'm gonna go back out of this again. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at one of our SageMaker. Actually, we'll take a look at one of our Google models. I already have Google warmed up. So here in Vertex AI, I'm gonna go over here to the workbench 
And then I'm going to open Jupyter Lab and allow that to warm up a little bit. So if you're familiar with working with AI or any type of AI, um, you'll probably be familiar with working with Jupyter Labs, which Jupyter Labs is where all of your Jupyter notebooks live, um, which store the AI models. So here is my Jupyter notebook. And this is connected to, I actually want to use, yes, I do want to use this one. This is connected to my data cloud data. So what I first need to do is I first need to create a connected app. I need to enable OAuth and add my scopes to allow uh, Vertex AI to connect to data cloud. And then from there, I need to create a consumer secret and ID. And then I need to store those as secrets in secret manager and Vertex AI. Now, once I do that, what I can do is I can use our Python connector to connect to data cloud. So here it says set up CD con CDP connector, and then it's saying that it's making the connection um, to, to data cloud, okay? From there, I then have the ability to fetch data from a data lake object in data cloud. So here I'm actually querying a object or a data lake object in data cloud where I'm selecting multiple fields. And then what I'm able to do is use my data cloud data in Vertex a AI as my training data set for my AI models. Now, a lot of data scientists and a lot of uh, people that you know work with AI models, uh, they like to do a lot of explore exploratory analysis, just like I was speaking about with the no-code, low-code model builder, because they want to know if it's a good model, if the model is making good predictions, if there's any bias in their sample data set. And so one of the things that they can do inside of Vertex AI is... Uh, is uh, a lot of exploratory analysis so you can create um, some robust tables, some robust, robust charts, um, a lot of reporting here. So to, to look at the distributions of the data. So here we're actually describing um, in the data frame, uh, the fields that are here within our query. So you'll see here case type shipment damage, case type return, all of these months are fields that we're fetching from data cloud via our query right here. So all of these are fields that are coming in from data cloud. And all of these are our statistics that we're getting from our data within data cloud. So the mean, the standard deviation, the min, the max, um, as well as some intervals here. All of this is describing the data from our data cloud data, which is um, enabling us to make our data more powerful because now what we can do is we can make predictions with our data from data cloud. So. Here in this notebook is where our actual uh, model is being containerized and it's being run um, so that we could actually create our model endpoint. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through all this because it's basically just the notebook that has been run or after it's been run. And what we can see here is what we were able to do was create a local endpoint with our model. And then we were able to actually uh, ping our model or put in a uh, Put in, uh, in, put in inputs into our model and actually get inferences out. So here's our predictions that came as a result of our inferences that we put into our model after running it and creating the endpoint locally. And then we also have the ability to deploy our model endpoint publicly. And so here we are setting up our model endpoint so that it could be a public URL or a public endpoint. And then from there, what I'm able to do is get an actual prediction. So I'm gonna click in the Vertex AI. And you can see here that I was getting in, that it was succeeding and I was getting in a um, thousand uh, sorry, a million records early, a million records um, of predictions with my Vertex AI model. And where did all of those predictions go? Well, all those predictions actually went back into data cloud, into my data model object, which is product interest underscore DLM. So if I go here to my data explorer and I select my data space, what I have the ability to do is actually see either data lake objects or data model objects. I, I have the ability to see 
um, the records that are actually sitting inside of these objects. So I'm going to search for my product interest data model object. And you can see here, it's, a, it's an ML prediction, or it was got created from um, my prediction, my prediction model that I brought into data cloud. And you can see here is the predictions that I'm outputting. So just a little bit of a background on this model. What is this model doing? Well, you guys are, are, are marketing cloud people, so you know about Northern Trail Outfitters. So Northern Trail Outfitters, or NTO, is an apparel company. And what they're doing is they're storing data about uh, their purchasers. Um, so they're storing demographic data, what campaigns they've uh, they've uh, participated in, you know, uh, the months they've participated in, and the products that they've purchased in the past in the past and what they're doing is they're feeding all of this data in to their Vertex AI model in this notebook. So just go back up here. So again, whether they're a club member, what products they've been purchasing, what campaigns they're part of, state they live in, um, whether they've opened any type of cases and returned them. And so all of these are clicks, their tenure as a customer, pages visited, all of these analytics are going into this AI model. And then what this AI model is doing is it's outputting predictions based off of uh, the inputs here. And the prediction that it's outputting is the product that those people are most likely going to purchase next or the product that we would recommend for them to purchase. So here we have Paramount Peak, convertible pants, men's agility shorts, backpacks, et cetera, et cetera. All of these different things are the predictions as a result of the model. And they can all be um, output Using, um, using data cloud or output back into a data model object in data cloud. So it's kind of the full 360. Obviously I couldn't cover, I can't cover everything in an hour about uh, what data cloud can do, um, but that should, uh, just to recap what we what we've saw is, we saw the ability to again, create a connection between Salesforce CRM and then um, create a data stream to input the data from Salesforce CRM into a data lake object, map it to a data model object. And then we saw the ability to then use that data in an AI model, make predictions with that AI model of the data and put it back into data cloud, okay? And we also saw the ability to use the ingestion API for when there's not a connector available to upload the schema and create a data stream using that and insert a record using Postman or the API into a data stream for which there's not a connector available. So I know this is a lot, but no worries. Um, Aditya Tapali, my colleague and I, we have a very good YouTube series um, that you can watch that covers a lot of these things in detail. So we cover what data cloud is, we cover what data streams are and how to use them using the Salesforce CRM connector. Um, we also cover the ingestion API and how to use it to load data into data cloud. We also cover the web SDK um, for capturing insights on a website. So for marketing cloud people, this will be really cool because it's gonna show you how to use uh, the web SDK to capture uh, insights from things like cloud pages. And then um, we show you how to map data streams and talk about permissions. And one of the things we also talk about is how to segment and activate your data in marketing cloud as well, and how to do identity resolution jobs. Uh, and then if you wanna try this all out for yourself, you have the ability to sign up for data cloud org. These orgs are available for five days. Um, they, I'm not sure uh, what, how stringent um, they are in terms of which functionality uh, they're missing. But uh, from what I've heard, these are a very good way to try out data cloud for those of you that want to get hands-on that haven't tried uh, out working in data cloud before. All right, now I will pause here and take a look at the chat for questions. Thank you very much, Danielle. Um, so this is uh, informative and something which um, which is covered from the CRM and different aspects. So mm -hmm. this helps a lot. So I'm looking mm -hmm. at the chat and I see there's some question about the idea roadmap. Uh, as of now, the identity resolution record deletion is taking more than 24 hours. Do you have any internal insights on when this can be addressed? 
Um, so I don't have any internal insights as to when that will be taken care of. I do know the identity resolution team is, is, is working hard. Um, I would say, have you put in a ticket to that team? Anand, have you put in a ticket to that team? Because I would say that that's the best, the best thing to do is to definitely put in a ticket in and, and, and raise that this, this is an issue to, to product. Thanks, Daniel. And I see mm -hmm. one question from Mickey. Uh, Mickey, if you want to unmute and add any details or any context to this, uh, it would be helpful. And in the meantime, Mickey comes unmute. Uh, I have another question. Apart from having hands-on and learning uh, the data cloud, what all needs to be part uh, from the demo arc? So um, I'm trying to make sure I understand the question. So in terms of getting hands-on, so the demo org, you can, you can spin up as many of them as you want. Um, they're around for, for, for five days. Um, for example, why was Postman used for testing ingestion API? Postman was used just because that's what I have available to test it. <laughs> As you know, Postman is a tool that allows you to test APIs, also allows you to build APIs. You don't have to use Postman. If there's a tool that you that you prefer, as many of them out there, you could use uh, whatever to, tool you prefer to use. I prefer to use Postman because we already have our um, data cloud API collection available in our master collection. And so it's just easy for me to fork it add in the credentials and then and then use it to to test out my API or to demo with. But you don't have to use Postman by any means for testing or simulating the ingestion API. You can use whatever tool you'd like. That's great. great. Question. Yeah, I don't see any other questions. Everyone, if you have any questions, feel free to post them in the chat or you can unmute and ask them directly. And I think that is all. Um, so thank you very much, Danielle. And thanks everyone for hanging on with us. So the next session is going to be tomorrow, the same time. So we have a different schedule for these sessions. Please be, uh, please uh, watch for the notifications and also make sure that you have the updated calendar. So with that, I think we can call it a wrap. No, it's uh, not Thursday, it's tomorrow. So this, this schedule is like uh, not regular as Tuesday and Thursday, depending on the speaker availability, we have moved the, around the schedule. So make sure that you're following the updates on the Trailblazer community, this Phoenix user group page. I'll also keep posting all these messages on the Slack so you have all the updated information. Thanks again, everyone. And thank you, Danielle. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thanks. Bye.